Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Have a requested program today about bird houses and in particular uh, the request was for a bird house program for beginners. You know I've got bird house uh, videos up about bluebirds and about wrens in particular but just the basic overall uh, nesting boxes and and you know kind of tips about those so that's where we're going today um, first off why do we put up nest boxes well not all birds are cavity nesting birds you know I've said before that a lot of times I'll get someone in who uh, maybe he's just retired and he gets into woodworking and he wants to build boxes and he asks questions they ask like well my wife really likes cardinals how big does the hole need to be for a cardinal to nest in well doesn't matter how big you make it. Cardinals aren't cavity nesting birds. So yes, bird houses are our way of helping nature by replacing uh, natural cavities that have been destroyed because most natural bird cavities are in dead trees. You know, we have nature's construction workers, woodpeckers drill holes and, and they don't use every one they drill, they, they abandon them and, they, and so other birds will nest in them. You have knot holes in trees where a, a limb breaks off from the tree and it creates a, a hole in there and birds will use that as a nesting cavity. Um, so what we do with the nest box program and probably the most famous uh, for this were the bluebirds. Uh, it, when, whenever a bluebird started declining in this country, um, you know, we associated it a lot with uh, nest competitors, but really a lot of it had to do at first for loss of habitat. We were cutting down dead trees. We were destroying the places that had the natural cavities drilled in them that these bluebirds were using. So the basis of bluebird boxes, or what we do with nest boxes, is we imitate nature. And that's where a lot of these rules that I'm going to be talking about for you come from, is from studies. Uh, I myself got to work on a, a, a woodpecker research project in North Carolina, red cockaded woodpecker, which is an endangered species. Uh, we, we followed them around, we banded them, we, we studied their habits, we studied their nest cavities, and, and a lot of that kind of study led to what we do with nest boxes. So first off, the first rule about uh, nest boxes is don't get your hole too big and don't get your hole too small. The reason you don't want a hole too big is because birds like that hole, the nest can, they, that they go into, to be just big enough for them to squeeze into. They feel safer that way. Plus, if it's too large, then a larger bird can get in there and run them off. Um, the number one bird that we worry about doing that, of course, are starlings. So a, a bluebird nest box hole and it works for tree swallows and Carolina wrens and lots of other birds as well, is one and a half inch in diameter. And let's see, let's grab this one for you. This is a, a classic bluebird box. And this hole being one and a half inches in di diameter is perfect for a bluebird to fit in, but a starling can't squeeze in there. Starlings require a two inch hole diameter hole. And so if you had a hole that was too big, if you don't, if not, don't do your research and you drill a hole too big, then you're going to usually attract more pest species like starlings. So make sure when you're studying and you want it, what kind of box you want in your yard, you get the right size hole. And the two classic hole sizes are the one and a half inch hole for the bluebird box. You see the dimensions of it. It's, it's big enough for them to go in, build their nest down where they're safe down in the bottom so they can't, uh, predators can't reach in and get to them. And then the small holes, the wren uh, or house wren houses are only about one inch in diameter, one and one sixteenth in diameter, uh, and they're very small and no other bird can really fit in there if it's done properly. So that one you don't have to worry about uh, other birds competing with them, but bluebird boxes you do get a lot of competition. So the study, you know, the first recommendation is make sure that your house is the right dimensions and big enough for the birds you're trying to attract. Now, we said the bluebird box, you know, you can see all of these across here. I've got several different examples of birds that can use a bluebird box, and a lot of that has to do with placement of the bluebird box. But the, the most important, second most important thing, we talk about the dimensions in the hole, now they need to be cleaned out. So you need to have easy access to clean out the nesting material from inside a bluebird house. The reason for this is bluebirds will nest up to three times a year. They won't reuse the old nest material. 
in the bottom of it. So they'll build another nest on top of that nest and then another one on top of that and they'll fill the box up and it gets very dangerous because they get too close to the hole so predators can get to them. So they're another tip. Make sure that you clean out your nesting material after the nesting. Now, the one time the exception to that rule is the last nesting of the season in the fall. Say your last nest is late August, September. Well, you might want to leave that nesting material in there because during the winter, bluebirds and other birds, the like Carolina wrens and chickadees, will use nest boxes to roost in at night to stay out of weather. So that's a good thing, and a nest box serve more than just one purpose. Even if they know birds nested in your nest box, you may have birds roosting it in the winter. So that's a good thing for birds because weather is very dangerous for them, especially in, in harsh conditions. So remember, maybe that last nesting of the season, wait just clo to clean that out more like February because the nesting season typically runs from really mid-March to, to all the way through September 1st, somewhere in there, is the real nesting season for bluebirds and, and other uh, cavity nesting birds in this area. So a good nest lift, I mean a good, a good clean out, and that was the nest, that my next part, was a nest lift. These fit in the bottom of the nest boxes, and what they do is they keep the grass up off the bottom of the nest box. These are great to have because if, the, if it does rain really hard and water gets in your box while you still may have drainage, good, great drainage in them, the nest material can get wet and that's very bad for insects. It helps propagate the, the bugs which are terrible on the babies. Um, keeping that nest off the bottom of the box with a nest lift and you can make your own. Your store, but we have these of course but you can make them out of just a little uh, hardware cloth that you can bend just so that the, she lays, she builds the nesting material up on top of the, that, that and then clean that out clean this up and put it back in there between nesting. So nest lifts are really, really good things to have if you're a good tip for a beginning bird watcher. Now, another thing that happens with nest boxes is squirrels and uh, other birds will try to widen out this hole. A squirrel doesn't re really know that he can't fit in this box, so he'll chew this hole out and make it bigger again so your starlings can get in there. Um, and people come in and say, oh no, he's ruined my box. Well, we have portal protectors that you can resize your, your box, your hole, so you can put it on there, or if you put it on there to begin with, the, the uh, squirrels can't chew it because it's metal. The other birds that will do this are woodpeckers. Woodpeckers, uh, like a red-bellied woodpecker, this is too small for him, so he might ham try to hammer this out big enough for him to use it. But these little portal protectors are really, really good ideas. Now, to take it an extra step for uh, portal protectors to help against predators, we have portal guards like these, and you can see it from the side. This gives that little tunnel effect, and the bluebirds don't mind it, the bluebirds will go in there, but this adds extra protection to keep raccoons and cats from being able to reach in there to get to the, the birds inside the nest box. So this is something you may want to consider too. Some people that have especially problems with raccoons or cats will use these. So. But there's lots of ways to make your house better, but the general rules, again, size of the hole, make sure you can clean it out, the nest lift, the portal protector, and what we learn from our natural studies is try to face the whole of your box to the morning sun. Now this is if it's out in the open, if it's in a heavily wooded area and it's shade all day long, then it may not be as important. But especially a bluebird box out in the open, they want the morning sun coming into the hole, never the late afternoon sun blaring in there and never the cold north wind blowing in there. So anywhere from south, the east to southeast is the best direction to fit that. And the height of your box, all boxes should be put at least four and a half feet off the ground, the whole of the box. Reason for that, house cats can jump straight up and about four feet, so four and a half, because they'll just sit under a box and stay real still until the adults come in and they'll jump straight up and snatch them if the, the box is too low. So make sure the height of your box is up about four and a half feet, five feet, six feet. The reason you don't go any higher, I mean higher would be good, but you need to be able to maintain this box. You need to be able to clean it out. And if you put it 10 feet in the air, you're not very likely to be able to maintain it as well as you need to. So good stewardship if you take on nest boxes. And they, the house wrens are a little bit different.
The house wren boxes, the little small ones, they only nest twice a year in this area, and they fill it full of sticks. Well, sticks are, don't absorb the moisture and keep the moisture in there like the, the straw does or the grass does of the bluebird. So you don't have to worry about the nest lifting those. And also, they're not as good, the, the sticks are better anti-bug, if you will. So not as important to clean those boxes out, but we generally want to clean their, your, your house wren boxes out at the end of the season. So September, October, you can clean those boxes out. Um, there's not house wrens migrate, so they're not here in the winter, so you don't have to worry about them trying to roost in your box. But when they, the house wrens do return in the spring and start their nesting cycle again, they do like to put the sticks in the box. It's just they're ritualistic for them. And so if it's empty and they had to put in new sticks, they're great with that because it's part of what they do. Now there are a few other boxes. Uh, this is a chickadee box. Now this is just a little bit of exception. It, its hole is between the two, between the bluebird and the wren. It's about a one and a quarter. So again, if you stay between the one and a half of the bluebird and the one inch of the wren, you're going to be pretty safe. Just don't go any bigger than that. It, 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 those holes any larger, so or any smaller. Make sure you can clean them out. Don't forget the nest lift. Don't forget the portal protectors. All these things you can do. Four and a half feet height facing east southeast and you can become a good steward in the bluebird boxes you know you've got all kind of different placement rules out there um, i've got other articles you know uh, videos about that you know open areas for bluebirds in the woods maybe for your your wrens and chickadees uh, so uh, the, if, it depends on what your yard is and what's good for them so um, i'll put a link to my bluebird art uh, my video and my wren video so you can take a look at those if you want more details so great idea for a program thanks for sending that in Give us a like, give us a share, send in ideas for future programs, just like this person did. We appreciate it. Uh, until then, come on, let's talk birds.